Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio ZSL Podcast. I'm your host, as always, and today is a very good day. You know what? Right now in Bangkok, there is a massive storm for the second consecutive day, and it's going to come around Bangkok and leave the same floods it did the night before. How beautiful is that? Here we go. Voice and visuals. People, if you don't already know, I got some of my beautiful Spanish who are tuning in to me. I don't know who it is out there in Canada that is tuning into my podcast, but you guys are literally on top, like the last podcast play for the first 24 hours. So basically, if I release a podcast, you guys are there on the top for the first 24 hours before Taiwan over, you know, overtake it, right? But man, it is exciting to have you on. And you guys may not know me, but I did presentations. Now, obviously, me being a podcaster, I've already developed my voice, you know, for the, over the last seven years, I guess you could say January 3rd, 2016 was the first day I started podcasting. And this taught me so much about voice, you know, Stephen Covey's, oh my God, I believe it's the eighth habit, if I'm not mistaken. If you haven't picked up that book, you need to find it. It's on Google Pretty, pretty much any PDF version out there. You can find it very easily. Don't got to pay for it. Sorry, Stephen. But nonetheless, this eighth habit, it reminded me of voice and how I ended up developing my voice. If you heard me back in 2016, if you go on to YouTube, Arsenio Buck 2016, you're going to see a lot of my personal development podcasts. Go check it out. Go check it out. Arsenio Buck 2016, Arsenio Buck 2017. Go listen to my voice then and listen to my voice now. And you're going to see an unbelievable difference and how voice is very, very important in terms of giving not only presentations, but speaking to people. I believe Dale Carnegie's How to Win and Influence People, How to Win Friends and Influence People is one of the greatest books. I just referred it to one of my two, well, two of my Brazilian students that I have. One, uh, he owns a welding business. His wife owns uh, an eyebrow slash uh, nail salon business. And while I was speaking to the both of them, it was amazing, you know, because when it came to voice, you know, I always ask them exactly what it is they're trying to achieve when it comes to, you know, English language learning and the different situations they get into and developing the voice, you know, in general. And, you know, me giving them references to getting outside their shell and developing their speaking and hosting friends and how can you host friends and what conversation topics should you avoid and which one should you, of course, not avoid? This is going back to my previous season. But nonetheless, I would have to say when you stand up to public speak, shift and focus, you know, when I first started doing my podcast, my first, po first podcast being January 3rd of 2016, you could see a lot of those podcasts. I was very, very nervous because I realized that I was being vulnerable to the world out there. And when you stand in front of people, when I was in a small meeting room at the Bangkok Marquis Marriott in Bangkok in 2016, before I did a BIDC presentation in regards to digital technology and how you can develop and man not not manifest but use social media to your advantage it was terrifying it was terrifying because a lot of my you know I'm speaking to a Thai audience which really isn't my audience and then I have a couple of foreigners in the background and you know there's one girl who I met afterwards and she's from Lithuania and stuff like that I exchanged some cards and information with a couple of individuals and stuff like that but it was terrifying. It was. But I remember that there was a guy, his nickname is Boss, literally B-O-S-S. -S. And he was one of my trainers from 2018 to about 2020. And I stopped going to that gym a very, very long time ago. This was before COVID. 
but he was a gracious and wonderful individual. You know, I love him to my neck. I, listen, I love him like I do my next breath. And he told me, when I said, Jesus Christ, I got a presentation tomorrow. I'm very nervous. He said, why are you nervous? You do a podcast every day. It's the same thing. And that was the aha moment. This shifted me back to 2017. I'm sorry, not 2017, 2007, 15 years ago at that time, 12 years prior, when I was doing a presentation in my communications 101 class, William Neff, right? William Neff, still remember his name. He was the one that shook my hand when I finally got my degree, man. It was so amazing. And when I did my first presentation, one of four throughout this semester, he shook my hand. And, uh, you know, obviously when I graduated, but going back to that first day, I was terrified of doing presentations. We had uh, an experimental presentation we had to do. We had an introductory presentation. I forgot the third presentation, but then the fourth presentation was like a persuasive presentation. And boy, I went up there and I don't know what the fuck I talked about, but I rocked the house. And it's crazy because that was just a microcosm to what I ultimately ended up becoming. And so my question to you is, when you stand up and speak in public, in your classroom, at work, wherever it is you are, what keeps your audience interested in what you're saying in your culture? In your culture. This is the phrase, in your culture, because obviously every culture is different. You know, I remember the host at the BIDC three years ago, the digital content festival is what they call it, or is what they did call it. And I remember that they were, you know, that they were actually very, very, you know, they, they were interested in what I had to say and that there were people shaking their head and they were not, but the point three, looking at some of the other people that were there, there was one girl who was actually the host and she was just dozing off. And I said, oh my God. And you know, I am a person who likes to, of course, for the lack of a better term, fuck around with other people. So I would make a loud noise to wake her the fuck back up. But nonetheless, because she was the host and because I'm not doing things that are very exciting because, you know, obviously my culture and the what, the, what I'm explaining it is totally different because, you know, to Thai culture, this just really isn't here. You know, it really isn't there in terms of, you know, what I have and what I'm giving them is the one taking notes in the audience. Come on, seriously. But nonetheless, I can tell you right now, my expertise and enthusiasm combined was a wonderful presentation nonetheless, and it is still on my Facebook page, Arsenio CSL Podcast. I do believe, I do believe this was back in August or September of 2019 and obviously I did one live uh through Facebook because obviously with the shutdowns and everything with COVID back in 2020 it was insanity can't do one in person uh but the year before meeting the oh, amounts of people that I met before at that hotel it was extraordinary but nonetheless you know I had to keep that enthusiasm and I think when it comes to different people, I guess you could say out of one out of every four, regardless if you do or do not know what the fuck you're talking about, they are going to be attached to your enthusiasm, period. They are. And so with that being said, when it comes to the continent of Asia, I do believe that the visual impact is more important than the vocal range. See, the vocal range, I could get people's attention by what I say, obviously, by this podcast, and as popular as it is, a lot of people are attached to how I say words and different things, and that's because I have a vocal range. I go on rises and climaxes, and then I bring it down to the very low when I'm trying not to make a point. It all depends how I feel, right? But... When it comes to vocal range in the Western society, yes. When it comes to visual impact in the Asian society, very, very, very important. When it comes to visual impact, you just got to know what your representational systems are in each of your audiences, right? 
And so again, is it a PowerPoint that is going to steer your audience or is it your natural presence? Obviously, Thai people need something to see. So I could have seen something that may have given off a one minute video in one of my slides. And that could have probably attracted them and said, oh, I am here. I'm tuned in. I love it. Let's do it. But I didn't. I just showed slide by slide showing Patreon, showing this and this and this and what you can use to utilize your business and your expertise and to, you know, build up your brand and stuff like that. So again, this was in August or September of 2019. Again, it was a tremendous experience and an experience that I will forever remember, uh, you know, in 2020, it was a totally different time given the fact that COVID happened and so many other things. But again, that's what I want you to think about when it comes to voice and visuals, right? And so if we look at it, you know, the attention span of your audience, right? People in the audience, how often are they distracted depending on the culture, the continent, whatever you may want to call it. Uh, the best listeners, you know, if, uh, you know, if you're speaking to a country, let's say America, you want to be very, very good with your vocal range. But when it comes to vocal range in Japan, they don't really need that. It can be very, a little bit standoffish, especially in Asian culture. So you want to like get away from it. So I realized that Gary Vee, someone who was very popular in the culture scape about four years ago, he gave a presentation in the Philippines and Indonesia. And when he did, he didn't cuss so much because he knew that Indonesia, a predominant Muslim country, would be probably a little bit, uh, okay, you know what? I don't like you using profanity. In the Philippines, probably a little bit better. When it came to Singapore, absolutely not because it's more about intellect, right? And so again, when it comes to visual aids, how much more memorable is it going to be in a Western country versus, versus let's say a South American or a European or African country? Uh, visuals, of course, that's another big thing that we need to take into consideration. And again, when it comes to all the other things in regards to that, there was a very, very interesting thing, as a matter of fact, it said, for over 100 years, the US presidential election has been won by a taller candidate 90% of the time. So whoever's taller wins the election. Now, I don't know about the last election in America, but I can assure you that when, uh, I don't even know who Barack Obama went up against. It's the, oh, John McCain, of course, Obama was much taller than him. Um, and then, who's a, Mitt Romney? I believe that that was the other guy in 2012. He was much taller. So it goes to show you, do people appreciate taller people more? No. I'm just giving you, let's say, communicative awareness in regards to different things. Like, I, uh, what is it? You know, men's voices are gradual. As a matter of fact, women's voices are gradually getting deeper. You know, um, Dutch women have the lowest female voices. These are facts that make you realize, oh, my God. Oh, man. You know, if you listen to this podcast and you're Dutch, you're like, oh, my God. So we have naturally, you know, you know, our voices are the lowest. Yeah. And so, again, there was a little bit of a scammer in terms of Silicon Valley, but there was a girl, American, of course, uh, that ended up having a very deep voice when she gave presentations, when she was trying to persuade, you know, all the investors in Silicon Valley. And she did, she did, and now she's being trialed and she's probably going to be thrown in jail for 5,000 years. But nonetheless, it goes to show you when it comes to voice and visuals, what is it that surprises you? What is it and what are the implications for a business presenter? What is it for someone who speaks up in a meeting, for someone who emphasizes their points in the way I, the tone and the range and the tonality 
that I have with my speech. What is it that you are intrigued by? And what is it that you could potentially improve on? Of course, I'm not saying going day to day with your friend just next door, your neighbor, and going, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you improve your voice, going back to what I said way at the beginning of this podcast, Stephen Covey's eighth habit, improving your voice, if you were to improve that, you know, what would be, let's just say, the beautiful effects in terms of what could happen and develop and envelop after is what I'm saying. And with that being said, voice and visuals, we're going to be going over voice lessons and visual impact coming up in our next podcast. Of course, you already know how I do. And then we're going to go over, you know, giving feedback and visuals in general, listen to some audios. You know how I do things that are very actionable. And again, going over (laughs) some very interested motivation speeches. You're going to love it coming up real soon. And with that being said, man, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to another wonderful the Arsenio's ESL podcast if you have any questions let me know and you gotta stay tuned for me I'm your host as always over and out